Our text this morning is very simple, very short. It's found in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. It's not even the whole verse. I, the Lord, do not change. Very simple. I'm going to be talking this morning about change, changing, and unchanging. And we're going to start with change, because that's one of the things that you think about when you change years, don't you? You wonder, what lies ahead for us in 2018? What lies ahead in this year the Lord has given us? What lies ahead for me, for you and me personally? Uh, what lies ahead for us as a, as a church community, as, as Maranatha? Uh, what lies ahead for our city, for our country, for Canada, for this world and the things that are going on all around the world in it? We really don't know, do we? Not really. We kind of guess, we can make guesses about what's coming, and we do. And sometimes we'll write, and sometimes we're not. But there's one thing you can always count on in life, and that is, it'll change. It will not stay the same. Change is coming. Things will change. In 2018, there will be changes. There will. Because everything changes in our world. Except, as we'll see, God He's unchanging. We'll all get a little older. That's guaranteed. Our families will change. Maybe there'll be a new baby. Or maybe the baby of the family will move out. Maybe one of our children will get married. Or we become grandparents. Some of us may lose a job this year. The workplace may close or something else may happen. While others may get a promotion and a raise or... Some may find a new and a better job, and some people will change careers, maybe because they lost their job. Some of our young people will graduate from school. We'll have some grade 8 students who will graduate, and high school students will graduate, college and university students, and they'll move on, perhaps to new schools, to new teachers and courses, or maybe enter the workforce for the first time as a career, that is. Some of us we'll probably experience health issues. Some of us will lose loved ones. Some of us will have friends that move away. And some of us will move away. We'll change cars. We'll change houses. Our lives will change. And we're in the middle of change here at Maranatha too with Pastor John's retirement at the end of November. Staff and others. Myself, for instance, we've had to step up in new ways, and so are you, so are we as a congregation. Will we find a new senior pastor this year? And if we do, how will that change things around here? The world will change around us. The headlines, who knows what's going to happen with North Korea? Who knows what's going to happen in Syria or South Sudan with all those millions of refugees it could go on and on and on because change goes on and on and on. Now, there are people who love change for change's sake. Not many. Most of us don't. Most of us are kind of reluctant about change, a little anxious about it. We know it has to happen, but you feel comfortable where you are, whatever the case may be. We're not sure what's coming. Change can be a scary thing, can't it? Change can cause anxiety and stress. Even good change, because you don't know what this is going to look like. It can make us feel anxious. It can make us feel out of control, really. And that's why we turn to experts to try to tell us, you know, what's going to happen and how we can prepare for it. So the last week, the media has been full of those kinds of stories, right? Experts in various areas trying to tell us uh, these, are their, the, the, these are their predictions for 2018. This, this is what may happen in uh, sports or in business, in the marketplace or in finance or, or what may happen in politics or in the geopolitical situation in the Middle East or in the presidency in the U.S. or whatever the case might be. Maybe they'll be right. Maybe they won't. We'll find out, won't we, as we go into the year. The Toronto Star uh, usually in the past, at least, has interviewed psychics about the new year. I haven't seen anything like that this year, but they'll make predictions for the year. Uh, that's also why newspapers will publish uh, horoscopes, right? It's so that, we hope, we can figure out what's coming 
and be ready for it. Have some control over it. Not be as anxious about it. We're looking for some kind of guidance, some kind of direction, some kind of certainty that we can rest our lives on. Some way to stay in control. Four things that I want to start by talking about with change, aside from the fact that it's inevitable. The first is that change brings loss with it. We lose something when things change. We lose what has been for what is now going to be. We lose what we've known. Even good changes bring loss because you've lost whatever was there, whatever that was, and it was what you knew. Even in a bad situation when it changes for the good, that can be a little scary too because at least in the bad situation, we understood what it was like and how to navigate it. And now you're moving into something new. You're, you're, you're losing something. You lose friends. You lose all kinds of things in different ways. So, for example, graduating as a student is a wonderful thing. It's a mark of achievement. Gain something. And there's a piece of paper to say so and a ceremony to go with it. And then you lose the school that you knew. And the friendships and the teachers and the courses and the familiarity of all of that as you move into something new and exciting, but you've lost that. So change brings a loss of some sort. But change, secondly, brings something new, new challenges. There are new things that require new ways of thinking, right? New ways of doing things because it's changed. The old way of doing it isn't going to work anymore. The old way of thinking about it isn't going to work anymore. We're going to have to figure it out. And those are challenges. And sometimes there's obstacles that get in the way because we're not sure we can figure that out or things that stand in the way for us of us succeeding in that. But there's challenges. So, for example, that promotion may be a wonderful thing. More money, more responsibility. Ah, but there's it, right? More responsibility. New responsibility. New things that I have to do, haven't done before. Can I do it? Can we do it? Change brings challenges, doesn't it? But then the third thing is that change brings new possibilities. New things are possible. New things can happen. It doesn't even mean that what was before was a bad thing. But when things change, it's like that kaleidoscope that you have when you're kids and you turn it and a new pattern emerges. There's a new opportunity of some sort there. New things, dynamics change in your situation because of it. And and new things are possible as a result. You may be forced to think differently, and out of that will come new opportunities. And that's part of what we're learning here at Maranatha as staff with Pastor John's retirement. We miss him. It really changes things. But we're also finding it changes the dynamics in relationships, and we're finding that we're learning how to be a team in a new and different way because we have to. So there's new opportunities as well. And that's always true with change. It can make us anxious, but it can create opportunity for new things that weren't there before, whatever that might look like. So change brings loss of some sort. Change brings new challenges. Change brings new possibilities, new opportunities. But there is one thing that will not change, and that's the fourth thing I want to talk about. God doesn't change. Ever. The Bible talks about him changing his mind about things. That's talking about it in context of prayer and so on. But the fact is, God doesn't change. Who he is doesn't change. I, the Lord, do not change, he said in Malachi. And what he was doing there was he was repeating his covenant faithfulness to Israel. He was taking them to task for the fact that, you know, things aren't going well. How come? Well, there's a reason for it. You're robbing me. 
You were supposed to be bringing your tithe in of food to the, the treasury, to the temple. That was what the Levites would eat and the, and the priests and so on. And he says, you're robbing me. You haven't been doing that. And then you wonder why I don't bless you? And it's the only place in Scripture that I'm aware of where God says, test me. He says, test me. Do what I told you to do and see what happens. See if I don't just open the storehouses of heaven and pour out blessings on you. And so when he says, I, the Lord, do not change, he's saying, I am covenantly, covenantally faithful to you. In fact, he goes on in that passage, the, the, the prophet says, so you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed because the Lord does not change, because his love does not change, because the fact that they're his people, that he has taken them to be his possession, does not change. So everything in this world may change, but God does not. He is unchanging. He is the rock, then, that doesn't shift, doesn't move, is at the foundation of life. Because you see, God's different from us. We change our minds. We can be fickle. Or we can be untrustworthy. We can decide one thing and then do another. But not God. And to underline that, I want to walk us through a couple of verses from different places in Scripture. 1 Samuel 15, verse 29, Samuel says this, he who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not a man, he is not a human being, that he should change his mind. He doesn't lie, he doesn't change his mind, because he's not like you, because he's not like me, because he's not like us. He doesn't lie, he doesn't change his mind, he keeps his promises, he is forever faithful. Psalm 33, verse 11. The plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. God makes his plan. And he carries them out. He carries them out through generations. And you think about that. I mean, already at the fall, you have God saying that I'm going to set in motion a rescue plan. Even as he's pronouncing the curse, He's saying, I'm going to do something about it. And then he comes to Abraham, and he begins to form a nation out of Abraham, and it goes down through the years. Israel is enslaved in Egypt. They come out of there. They take the land that God has promised to them, and the prophets are speaking to them, even as they go into exile, saying a Messiah is coming. And at last, in the fullness of time, Jesus comes. He is the Messiah. It took generations, it took centuries, but God did not swerve from his plan and his purpose. He does not swerve from his plans and his purposes. He will bring them to completion. When we sing, mine are keys to Zion City, Zion City is as certain as the fact that you're sitting here right now. Don't know when it'll come, but it will come because he is unswerving in his purposes. James 1, verse 17, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Every good and perfect gift comes from him because he's a good father who loves his children and who loves the people that he has made, his whole creation. So he gives good gifts. Talked about that in an earlier time and place. Yeah? You can count on God. He isn't fickle or capricious, and I love that phrase. He does not change like shifting shadows. That's something really insubstantial, isn't it? Shadows move, shadows shift. As we move around, shadows shift. God's not like that. We may be, but he's not. It means, for instance, you do not have to watch out for his moods. You don't have to kind of try to read God and see if it's okay to come to him now. He's not like shifting shadows. You can come to him always in repentance and in faith as his child, knowing that he will receive you, love you. 
because he doesn't change. He's not fickle. He's not like shifting shadows. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Love of Jesus is the same for us. His sacrifice is unchanging. The way to salvation doesn't change. Still through his sacrifice and through his sacrifice alone, as we receive it through repentance and through faith, he's still the way, the only way to the Father. Could go on. God's word does not change. God doesn't change his promises. His character doesn't change. He is full of loving kindness and compassion for his children. He's good. He's truthful. He's just. He's compassionate. He's patient. He's kind. He gets angry at the same things that he always got angry at, at sin. And he loves the same things that he always loved and always will in terms of righteousness, goodness, and anyone who turns to him with a contrite heart. Remember that? Contrite heart, he will never turn away. Never. He's unchanging. Now the fact that we live in a changing world, but we have an unchanging God, means two things for us. First thing is this. I think it's incredibly comforting. I think it makes us feel safe and secure because he's like that rock then. When everything else changes in our lives and sometimes it feels like you're in a hurricane and everything is, that's not tied down is blowing loose. God's that rock. God's present there. God's unchanging still loving, still in control, still God. And furthermore, he's at work in all of the stuff that changes around us, all of the things that happen in our lives. We can count on it. He is at work in it. Romans 8, verse 28. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So no matter what happens this year, no matter what comes your way or my way, no matter what it is, God is at work in it. It may not be a good thing. It may be a sad thing. It may be a hard thing. And we may not understand it at all, but God is at work in it for your good and for mine, for all those who love him. There's something comforting about that. Because what, one, one of the things it means is I don't have to understand everything because I can't. Can't figure it out, can we? I mean, that's why we try to make the predictions at the beginning of the year and then laugh at it a year later. Can't. We're not in control. But that in the middle of that thing that we don't understand, God is the rock, God is there, God is at work, and he's good. Always good. Still good. No matter what. So that's the first thing. I think that God unchanging is incredibly comforting. Safe, secure, a rock. Second thing, though, is a little more uncomfortable. And that is this. We may, may have to change ourselves because God isn't going to. And what that means then is God is unchanging about the things that he loves and the things that he hates. God is unchanging in his word. God is unchanging in what he values. And that means then, because he's God and has the right to say so, that he can speak into our lives and he can say that I don't like what's there or I want to strengthen this or I want that to change. And the fact is, we may need to change because he is not going to. 
And so he may stand in front of us in our paths sometimes, and we can't figure out why we can't get past him, why something's blocking us. And it may be that he's standing in our path because he's saying, stop. And he's not going to move. And we're going to have to change. Or there might be something that you start to become uncomfortably aware of in your life that he's putting his finger on, and you'd rather not think about it, but he keeps reminding you of it, and he's not going to change. So we will, I guess. I mean, we have a choice there, don't we? To change or not to change. But if he's not going to change, what are we going to do? Change, an unchanging God is both incredibly comforting and kind of challenging. And I think that's why I want to leave us today with both of those things, with the comfort. God's a rock. Count on him. God's a challenge. He's going to have things to say to you and to me this year too. And we're going to need to change to meet him in that. Because he's God. And he's unchanging. Even if everything else does. Why don't you stand with me? Let's pray. Father God, we love you and we're grateful for you. And we're so glad that you come into our lives with Jesus and with the Holy Spirit, that you speak to us, that you draw us to yourself, that you work in our hearts and in our lives, that we can trust you, that you're unchanging. That is so far out of our realm of knowing things because all we know is everything changes. Even the mountains change, given enough time, worn down by the weather and the rain and the streams. But you do not. And I pray that you will reveal yourself to us this year. As a God who does not change us as we walk through the changes that come in our lives, that we may put our hope and trust in you, that where you challenge us, we may bend ourselves to you rather than trying to get you to bend to us because you're the unchanging God. You are God, and you are God alone. Amen.